What's good, everyone, and welcome to Throwing Away Rapid Fire. This is the segment where we ask our guests as many questions as we can in around five minutes. And for this last main episode of the Priest series, I'm very excited to welcome one of the funniest people I know, the director of Toronto's Office of Catholic Youth, Father Frank Portelli. How's it going, Father Frank? Ah, thanks, Dylan. Much appreciated. Things are going good. Sweet, sweet. Very excited to have you on here. Before we go through the uh, the questions that I have for you, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, who you are? I've been a priest for, I entered the seminary at 27, was ordained at 33, and I'm now 45. I did three years in a, a parish, St. Luke's in Thornhill, as the associate pastor, and then have done the last nine years as the uh, director of the Office of Catholic Youth. And I'd like to add in that uh, the Cardinal doesn't trust me yet with the parish, so that's... Uh, Sweet. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of you already know who Father Frank is, but maybe you don't know some of these questions I'm going to ask him, so we're going to get right into it with the first question. Most random or interesting fact about yourself? Uh, used to have really long hair down to my, uh, past my shoulders. Really? That's the random fact. And I had my nose pierced, which uh, I almost, at 16 years old, got kicked out of the house uh, by my father over this thing he it was one of the things that <laughs> upset him so much it was the one time he didn't talk to me for a full month and he just kept wow. saying take the nose ring out take the nose ring out <laughs> so eventually i took it out but uh reluctantly so and i was just in my room uh um really irritated with him and i was just playing around with the nose ring and then all of a sudden the, the, the hole closed and then I was like, came down and said to him, look, I took it out, but I'm still angry at you. And anyway, I still feel embarrassed by that whole episode. Damn, I would, I would pay to see a picture of you looking like that. But <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I've deleted my Facebook multiple times, so <laughs> they might not be out there. Oh, man, that's crazy. All right, next question. Favorite movie of all time? Okay, well, I don't uh, deal in favorites uh, much anymore, but I, I guess I'd have to say uh, The Princess Bride. I've probably watched that about a million times, and my family can probably all quote the movie, which is totally uh, embarrassing. Uh, one that really impacted me was um, Shawshank Redemption, and then pretty much any other uh, Christopher Nolan movie. movie. Hmm. Yeah. Good answers. I didn't expect the first one, but that's... Yeah. In fact, all right, next question. I've been asking uh, some of the other priests this, so I'm interested to hear your take. Favorite current NBA player? Because I know you're a big ball fan. Uh, yeah, I got a soft spot for Jimmy Butler. He's like a kind of grinder, made his way up. Uh, LeBron and I share the same birthday, mm. although in a different year, and he got all the basketball skills. Uh, but I can't get over like Steph Curry's moves. So those are like my, I know I didn't pick one, but those are sure. my guys right now. Sure. Okay. And, uh, all time, then. all time. All time is a tough one. There's so many guys like Larry Bird and Magic and Charles Barkley and Shaq and so on, but I'm going to go with AI. Hmm. Next question, and this is a little bit more important. How would you describe the importance of youth ministry in the church? Well, one of the things that if you want to irritate me uh, is you say the youth are the future of the church. And the reason that bothers me is because the youth are the present of the church. Yeah, sure, everybody's part of the future. But I just, you know, it's sort of like a crisis moment that they're the future, so we need to invest. No, they're already in the church. So to me, youth ministry is a bridge, is bridge work uh, from finding ways to re-articulate the gospel to the younger generation and then bridge them into, uh, however, the, the church um, understands itself to those members that are already um you know, solidified and believing members of the church. But um, youth ministry is a particular thing for particular people at a particular age that uh, when they're coming of age and they're they're looking to be uh, taken seriously and their, their ideas and so on. And that's, so anyway, that's what I think youth ministry uh, tries to be, is tries to make it 
presentable to them in their own language or um, in a way that they understand how it's relevant to themselves. Music, ideas, whatever. So that's where I think youth ministry is and why it's so important uh, for the church to invest in that. It's awesome. All right, last question. Uh, all in all, what's been the most beautiful aspect of the priesthood? You get invited to all the um, these intimate moments, these, these uh, I don't know, holy, I say we're walking on holy ground. You're with people when they have a, you know, the birth of a child and you're baptizing them and everybody's happy and you're trying to bring to these people the idea that, um, you know, God loves each of us like his uh, own beloved kids, you know. And it's not rational and God is weird and he's unique like that. There's no way to explain it other than that's just who God is. And then you're there the same time with, with, you know, at weddings and everybody's happy and so on and so forth. And you get to share in that joy with people and people remember you. Like I still have people from St. Luke's still reaching out to me from nine years ago. I don't deserve any of it. And there's still a handful of people that still write me Christmas cards and, you know, still want to grab coffee or something like that. And then you're also there with people at their most vulnerable. You know, I've been to, of course, many funerals and, you know, the funerals that you, the one thing that's kind of unique is that uh, we always see the priest as, oh, the priest is my parish priest and he does my funeral. But I've, you know, now that 12 years have gone by, I've had the sense of like even family members. I've got to do funerals for my family members, my uncle, my grandmother, my cousin. And, you know, the family's very appreciative and uh, it's kind of like you start losing it at the altar too. You, you start mourning in that, in those moments, but those are so precious. Um, and then the other thing is, is like uh, when you get to visit people in the, in the hospital, at some point you start to wonder, am I doing anything? You know, am I making any difference? And then somebody steps forward and says, Father, thank you so much for visiting. Uh, you've really changed, uh, you know, how I think of this thing, how I think of suffering. You've made me uh, recognize that God is present in my life right now. And just as a little uh, anecdote, I, my, a buddy of mine from high school, his mother was in the hospital and he said, would you come and do whatever you priests do for my uh, mother, you know? So I said, yeah, sure. I went and anointed her. And uh, once in a while, if I feel inspired, I'll bring a rosary with me and I don't like throw these rosaries around. Like, I don't want somebody to be like, oh yeah, thanks father, throw it out, you know, in the garbage or something. But anyway, I, uh, she was really afraid of being alone uh, when she was dying. And I anointed her and I gave her this uh, rosary and I said, this is the rosary that I have used in the past and I want you to have it and, you know, hold on to it. And if it brings you comfort, you know, if you pray it or just hold on to it when you're alone, hopefully it'll bring you some consolation. And my buddy said she never let go of that rosary. Even when she went in for tests and stuff, she would say, give me the rosary before you take me into the thing. Mm -hmm. So just little gestures, I mean, that are not exclusive to the priest. But I have no business being at my buddy's mother's uh, hospital bedside. Other than the fact that I got this thing on here, you know, this collar here, and they ordained me for these kinds of things, right? So those are kind of the the cool things I would say of uh, just being invited into people's lives, and and they let you into the most precious moments that otherwise, first of all, you don't deserve to be there, but it's a grace to be invited into those moments, and uh, you try and really hold them as precious, and and. Uh, and uh, think that you are seriously walking on sacred ground. That's beautiful, that's beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that, uh, Father. And yeah, thank you so much for this whole uh, rapid fire. We've gone through all the questions. Uh, yeah, thank you for joining. And since this is the priest edition, if you could end us off with a blessing, that would be great. Sure. Pleasure to be here, by the way. May Almighty God bless you and all the viewers and uh, your families and friends, especially in this time of uh, pandemic and lockdown, that you may be blessed and comforted by the good Lord, he who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.